Hello. Today I am going to talk about making flack. These puffy red angry balls in the sky. Um, you could do it using particle simulations and smoke, but now that Blender has um, empty volumes, we can do this without having to run a simulation. It's faster and I think you get a lot more control over each individual element. Uh, with smoke there's a lot of fiddling around with the simulation, you have to run the simulation, you have to cache it. You don't have any of these problems with this. You basically create, you know, your your cloud element, and then there's some shading. There's a shader network that goes on the volumetrics, and then if you want, you can choose to put some lighting in it, like these have, or you can just leave it black as if it's like an you know an older, an older shot. So how do you do this? Start by creating some kind of uh, geometric object. Um, in the middle. I like to use round or quad spheres. Quad sphere. Um, something like that. And I'm just going to shrink it down because it doesn't need to be that big. And we can put a subdivision surface on it, smooth it out, and I'm going to apply a little rotation and scale. You would want to you want to start off by scaling them approximately the right size uh, for your scene. I found that uh, you could do all this work on it, get it looking good, and then if you hit scale, all of a sudden um, some of the other modifiers you add to it make everything kind of blow up. So it's good to start off at the right scale right away. Now we can pick, uh, this is this is going to be the base of our cloud, and we're going to distort this sphere in a couple of different ways. Uh, so a little bit manually, and we're all going to use um, some procedural noise to give us that kind of general volume. And then we'll add a volume empty to this, and, and that volume empty will use this sphere as the basis for creating, you know, the burst of cloud. So the first thing to generate some of that randomness is you can go into edit mode, I'm in vertex mode, and I can say select random. And that's just going to pick some random points. I don't want that many, maybe 15%. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna scale those out a bit, and that's gonna create some bumpiness there, and it can shade smooth. And I'm also going to add a displacement modifier, and we're gonna put a cloud texture on that. I'm gonna call this flak noise. Well, clouds, and then we can go back to here. We can change this down to something. All right. Like I want to make it more spiky. And then you can even take a couple others, you know, periodic, just grab some kind of randomly and pull them out even further. So this is going to uh, create the the volume basically of our flak burst. Now the next thing you do is you want to add and you want to add a volume and you want to add a volume empty. You're not going to see it, it's going to show up here. And I like to group these things together. I'm going to get rid of all these. So we don't want them. So that's the cute, that's the mesh volume, and then this is the volume empty. And volume empty takes two modifiers. So the first one is mesh to volume. And then you select that as the target. I mean, and we can hide the, the round cube. You can see we already have decent looking cloud going there. The voxel amount is the you know the the amount of detail you're gonna have in there. I like to crank this up. We'll say 128. That'll make for a more defined looking cloud. The other modifier we can put on here is a volume displace. And that's going to add some noise to it. And I'm just going to be lazy. I'm going to take the same noise that I used. And you can see how that, if I toggle that on and off, it goes kind of like a soft edges to something that's a little more violent, a little more interesting. All right. Now, if we render this right now, we just get a, we get a cloud. You know, So if you were just shooting for clouds, you could use this you know, process to make some pretty decent clouds. Um, but we're not shooting for clouds. We're shooting for flak. So, want to go to object, 
and we want to, on the volume material, we want to create a new material, we'll call this flak, and it creates a <clears throat> principled volume, it knows that we're working on a volume, but we've got to tweak this a little bit to, to make it a little bit uh, darker and angrier. So I'm going to add a, a noise texture. And we'll just hook it up to general and the ubiquitous color ramp. And the factor goes into here. And the multiply. And then we're going to plug that into density. And here, we're just going to bump this up to here-ish. This is all fiddly stuff. You know, you're going to fiddle with things until you like the way they look. And we're going to also use noise to define the color. So we want kind of an angry, dark looking thing here. And maybe I'll turn on the background sky so I can see a little better. And make things even more dense. And like I said, this is very fiddly. So your, your results are probably not going to look exactly like mine. But the general thing, general thing to keep track here is you're using generated coordinates that are fed into some kind of noise texture. It could be noise, it could be any one of the other noise textures. That's going to give you some variety in here. Maybe I'll go for a little less noise. Um, and then you're going to use, you can use a color ramp to kind of clip some of that, that noise to make some of the volume thicker or thinner. And then you can use a multiply to kind of increase the overall density. See if I if I crank that way up, it gets it gets very black. And then you can use this to do your colors. And if we were to pick some weird colors here, you could see the effect there. If you wanted some uh, some colored smoke which would be kind of interesting because the Japanese used colors in their flak part, so you could make some kind of interesting colors there, but uh, we'll say this is not Japanese flak, it's somebody else's flak. All right, good now, I think you get the idea there. So that's our, our flak burst. Now we can go in, we can go back if we want, and turn this thing back on. If we want to make it, uh, we decide we want some bigger fingers on there, we can pull those out and maybe pull some of these out and you can see how that affects the volume. You start to get some things shooting out in different directions. All right, so that's basically the cloud. Then you can you can also do if you wanted to, I found this is sometimes an interesting effect, um, is, to, is to take some of these, these chunks, maybe take this couple faces here, duplicate them, extrude them, and do that a couple times, maybe scale it. And each one of these things that I'm creating here is going to create a little smoke smoke volume. Smoke volume. And you'll see what this looks like with the smoke in a second. And if you wanted to, you could, uh, if you right click on these and you say randomize vertices, you can get a little bit of noise, extra noise in that little bit there. So now I've got these, these little things here. And it's a little hard to tell, but you can see, you can see one there. So you get these little detached bits of, of smoke. So you, the, the, the thing here is you have a lot of control over the shape of your cloud. You can make it exactly the shape you want, put it exactly where you want. And that that, that really isn't an option uh, when you're working with, well, it is an option, I guess, with fluids 
in simulations, but I think it's a lot easier to do this because you're sculpting something that's kind of static and you can go back and, and quickly change it. You don't have to run a simulation and you don't need a cache for what you're doing. All right, so that's that's the cloud part. Now we can add some some light to this. So some of your clouds, some of your, your flak, depending on how long ago it burst, is going to be black, right? So these are older older ones, and then these are ones that are just, just happening. So they're gonna have some flame in them still. So this could be an older one, but we could put some lighting in there. So let me put a, we'll start by putting in a, a light, point light, and we'll just stick that right in the middle. And we'll make that a, a red. And you know the wattage really depends on how how much you want going on there. Again, this is your 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 screen's probably going to look different than mine. It seems like everybody's a little different. It has to do with the noise and the scale and and all that kind of stuff. So my recommendation is just fiddle with it until you see something you like. Now you can duplicate that light, and I'm going to change the light to an orange, so we get <clears throat> excuse me, so we get some some color variation in there, make it look like there's some fire going on. All right, so that's one thing you can do to, to add some light to the inside. And the other thing you can do is you can create some, some geometry in there as well. So like we did with the, um, the center of the cloud, I'm going to create a um, kind of a glob globby ball of polygons. I'm just gonna hide the lights for a second here. I'm going to start with another sphere. And similar kind of process, I'm going to add a um, displacement to it. And we can even use the same noise if we want. Shade smooth. I'm going to add a subdivision. Do that to the top. Give us some stuff to work with. And. I'm just going to make the whole thing smaller because we want it to be inside the cloud. So if we turn back on our volume, we can see we've got this kind of nebulous thing going on there. Now we need to add a shader to this. And we'll call this Flax Center. And this is also going to be a principled shader. So shader. I'm going to go to principled volume and plug that into volume, right? Because this is volume. And I'm going to add some things to make it colorful. So the first thing, we'll do a color ramp. And this is going to define the reds and the oranges and the other colors that are in there. So we're going to add like maybe three tags here. So this one will be also black. This one will be red. This one will be orange. And the last one is white. And the position of these, you're just going to have to fiddle with it until you get something you like. The, um, the blacks on the left are going to cut out some of the colors entirely, so it's going to give you some, some holes in your fire, make it look a little interesting. So let's, let's hook this up to texture coordinate and a noise. I'm going to use the object noise and we'll change that to we'll that five, change the detail, cut that down a little bit and add just a bit of distortion. The distortion is going to add some some turbulence to our quote unquote fire that's going on there. And I'm going to create another converter color ramp and this is going to you know clip the texture coming out of here and we'll, we'll take a look at these things individually in a second once I get them up here so take a look at that I'm going to turn off the volume just to speed things up all right so that's the effect of just the noise on the object you can see how we can use the black slider to kind of add, add some detail here. This is going to create some of the depth to the fire. And we're going to also use some of the geometry, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we're going to use some of the geometry to also create some depth. So we're going to use a, 
an ambient occlusion node combined with a math node, which works well with exponents. So we do that, change this to something large, like a 10. And so that's the effect of the ambient occlusion. It's going to make these intersections darker, which you, know, you might expect because the fuel has been burned up in there and the, the outer sections are where the fuel is still burning. And we're going to take another math node and we're going to add these together. So we're combining this and this to get this. And you now we change the distortion. You can see how it adds, adds some flamey kind of twisting in there. I think it's kind of cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now if we take this stuff that we created, the shadows and everything, we can use that to drive our colors. I'm going to take that, put it in here, and you might want to adjust how much red and orange and yellow you got. If you want to really clip that, or clip that red, or the white rather, you can push it way up there. Um, again, filling around as much as you want to Get the colors you want. Try and get more orange in there. Maybe I'll get rid of that black. All right, I think you get the point. Don't no, waste your time. All right, so we're going to take another. We're going to duplicate this math node. We're going to create a multiply. And we're going to use our mask and set up a couple more data points based on based on this information. Right? So we've got that information following flowing into the color. And I'm gonna get rid of the white. I like that better. Alright, that looks hotter. Alright, so we got that driving our color. We're gonna change this to oh we got that uh, multiplies right. So this is going to go into the color of our volume. Let's see what that looks like. Can't really see it because the, we don't really have the density set up. This is going to go into density. And we want to crank this up, say 25. All right, now we're starting to get something we can see. And we want to also we want to reuse this for the emission color and for the black body tint. Right, and then we're going to use this for the emission strength and we're going to crank this up as well and now we've got kind of a fiery thing going on there and if we put that inside it doesn't look particularly convincing close up I don't think but inside of the smoke volume and if we scale it up and then if we turn on our point lights Kind of an angry looking ball of smoke there. I'm gonna increase the density of that smoke. Maybe not the I mean maybe not the density, maybe the color will make it darker. It's too too light. Alright, there you go. Put a bunch of those in the background and it starts to starts to look like flack. Right, I hope that was useful. I was kind of quick and dirty, but I think it's a lot easier than um, doing it with volumetrics. All right, thanks for watching.